Hello, and welcome to this CERN at School screencast, uploading a file to the DAC map. I'm Tom Winty, and I'm the Royal Commission for the Exhibition of 1851's Schools Research Champion, and I'll be taking you through this brief guide to uploading a file to the DAC map, the Data Acquisition, Management, Analysis and Presentation system that we use to manage the data associated with CERN at School. For this activity, you'll need two things. Firstly, some data that you've taken with your detector, be that... Um, from following the Getting Started with the MX-10 screencast that we did earlier, or with whatever experiment that you've done. So I've got the Test Data 01 that we did uh, before, and you can see there are the six files associated with the three frames, and we can, uh, just to remind you, this is the format that they come in, the pixel X, the pixel Y, and the pixel C values, and there's one entry per pixel uh, like that. And then likewise, you have the detector settings file accompanying that or each frame which has the uh, detector settings encoded into it so you don't need to worry about those so if you've got those you're all set and you'll also need your DAC map login details so this is the login screen associated with the DAC map and if we remember our email address and our password that we used before uh, if you have forgotten your password, you can click on this link here and that will take you to a page where you can enter your email address and get a password reset request. But uh, just, just try to remember it. Anyway, so we've entered our email address and our password. We can now click login. Uh, never remember this password. And uh, you're taken to the DAC map homepage. If you remember, it's got my page, people, equipment, all of that stuff here. And here's a random frame that is... Uh, taken from one of the other data sets that's been uploaded. Now the first thing to do is go to my page at the top and we can get a recap of all of our details. Um, our data files which is currently empty that's what we'll be looking to change with this one and uh, our reports from last time and that's all fine. But first you need to prepare the data to actually upload so if we just lose our browser for the moment and get this test data file back up. Now the DAC map deals in .zip files because you don't want to be faffing about with all of the individual frame files. So what we do is we just zip these files up into a compressed .zip file. And we can do that either by selecting all of the files like that by clicking and dragging, or uh, if you're feeling particularly fancy, you can control A, that will select all of the files in there. And once you've done that, you can right click on any one of the files and then choose send to and compressed zip folder. And that will automatically create a zip file for you. So we'll click on that option there we can enter a file name, try and be as descriptive as possible. So I'll just type getting started test data 01. Don't use spaces in file names, use dashes or underscores. Um, it, it's just better practice. And uh, we'll even stick a date in there in reverse, uh, like so. And that's our zip file created. It's as easy as that. So we can hide that and get our browser back up. And uh, there's a few ways of doing this, but the simplest way is to go from my page, data files, and click on upload a new data file. So the first thing to do is choose a data file name. We'll go with uh, getting started with the MX10 test data 01, like so. Select the data file, so ours is on the desktop, nice and easy to find. And there's the zip file there, we double click that and that selects that. Now for latitude, longitude, and altitude, this is the geographical information associated with the data that's actually quite important to get, especially once we get Lucid data involved and want to start comparing where we've collected different data files. So the easiest way to get the latitude and longitude is actually to go to some sort of mapping software service. We go to Google Maps, just for convenience. We can go to Google Maps, click on that, and our data was collected the Langton Grammar School for Boys. And uh, there it is on Google Maps. We can get the satellite view and actually see the buildings. And uh, if we just lose that window there. Zoom in. And this is the Star Centre, our research facility at the Simon Langton Grammar School for Boys. And to get the latitude and longitude, all you do is right click on that building and then click what's here. And it'll tell you the latitude and longitude in the search bar there. So we can just copy and paste that into the forms. 
like so. Now for altitude, there are a number of ways of doing this, but um, the easiest way I found is to search for uh, something called Elevation Finder, which is a free map tool. And uh, that'll take us to this website here. And again, we can type Simon Langton Canterbury, click search. Lo and behold, there it appears on the map. We can zoom in and out. And then with the crosshairs selected, we can click on the map, left click, and that'll tell us the altitude there. So we'll use 48.6 meters. So there we go, that's our geographical information. Don't worry about this, this is more important for uh, Lucid really, the telemetry data associated with uh, how the satellite is oriented. Um, our detector was just flat on the bench top, so that's okay. And then we can add some notes. So this is the data set collected during the CERN at school YouTube screencast getting started with the MX10 and then we can say um, how the data was actually collected so the detector was exposed to a potassium chloride source for three frames each lasting five seconds. 15 seconds of data. And uh, you can add as much detail as you can here so that people know exactly how you collected your data because that's what you need to do for science. So once all of that information is entered, you can create data file. And uh, there we go. That is our data file uploaded to the DAC map. And you can see here, Google Maps, this gives us a nice image of the star center where the data was taken. We've got our information about the file like that. And uh, this data file show page also shows you the frames. Now at the moment there are no frames associated with it because we haven't processed the file. So uh, we can do that now by clicking process file. And that uh, unzips the zip file, reads through it, chucks away anything that it doesn't need and produces you three frames as we'd expect. Acquisition time, five seconds, start time, or again, all encoded in the detector settings file, so that's, you don't have to worry about that. And uh, But at the moment, the status is unprocessed. So what we have to do with the map is process our frames manually, so you can inspect them, check that they're okay, and uh, generally explore the data that you've taken. So you click on the frame in the table. At the moment, it says that it's unprocessed. So we can change that by clicking process, and lo and behold, the frame has been processed by the DAC map, and you can now see the clusters, the particles that were detected with your detector. And this is a nice bit of JavaScript, which will, if you look to the left, will give you the individual particle properties as processed by the DAC map. And you even get a list of clusters here with the different cluster types. So um, yeah, that's one frame of data. We can then go back to our data file and go to the next one. So uh, we'll go to the second frame. Again, it's unprocessed. Click process, whoosh, and uh, oh, it's a nice big one. There, if there is a particularly interesting cluster, you can uh, hover the mouse over the cluster, left click on it, and you'll get a much more detailed view of the cluster itself, again, with the particle properties, the particle type, the algorithm that was used. That's uh, AC1, which is named after Zarya Coop, our uh, SEPNA intern over the summer 2013, who developed this, this algorithm for identifying different particles and uh, but once we've looked at that we can uh, return to the frame that we want and likewise return to the data file so we can now uh, go to the third and final frame of our data file and process that and uh, oh yeah another interesting one down there nice curly beta where uh, an electrons bounced off the silicon inside the detector crystal lovely jubbly and we'll go back to the frame and then go back to the data file. So now all three frames are processed. And uh, just for fun, if you go to people and uh, leaderboards, you'll see that um, I am now third on that leaderboard as I've processed three frames. And you can just use this to see how you're doing in comparison to other DAC map users. So there we go. That is a frame of data uploaded and how to explore it. You can see now on my page that uh, we've got one data file 
and uh, three frames processed. But the most important thing to do, of course, is to submit a report about what you've done. So we go to science, uh, we go to reports, and um, click on create a new report. And uh, we'll just enter in some details. Uploaded the test data 01 from the screencast. Principal author, that'll be me again. No co-authors. The Langton Star Centre. And again, we can add the Langton Star Centre. Start date is today. End date today. Again, about a quarter of an hour. Just enter in the people data, the user data, and uh, I uploaded the data set with the CERN School screencast getting started with the MX10. Uh, there's no PDF, but now we can associate a data file with this activity. And uh, if you click on the drop down menu here, it's going to select our data file that we just selected. The detector used was this one. This is the laptop. And uh, so that all of that information is captured on the report so that we know what was done. And that's created the report. If we go back to my page, uh, we can see now uh, two reports submitted, and our reports are listed here on my page. So that's all there is to uploading a file to the DAC map. That's the end of this screencast. I hope that's been useful and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.